All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Kevin again with Yerky Racing. Back in the shop again today on the LT1 engine. I'm in the last video. We got number two through number eight rods and pistons installed into the short block. The only one we were leaving off was number one hole. That was by design. What we had originally that caused the problem for the engine to be down and need to go through it again was a quarter 20 bolt stuck on top of the number one cylinder. We thought that originally that piston was okay. Everything kind of at first look and even second look was you know how it was supposed to be everything looked good it wasn't until i went to put the new ring pack on that you could tell it was a little snug on that number on the uh number one ring line the top ring line up there so i got to looking at it a little bit closer and where that bolt head was on top of the piston it actually ended up pinching that ring line just a little bit and if you hang on i can show it to you so here is the piston um hopefully you can see Right here we had the uh, bolt head stuck in it and the kind of where the threads did some more damage on it. But right here underneath that, hopefully you guys can see it. I'm not sure if you can, but if it'll focus, there's a hairline crack in it. And it just pinched it enough where the ring isn't going to be free. And, you know, for performance build and all, I just don't want to take a chance on it. So I went out and I bought another piston. So you hear what we got. This is supposed to be a you know, factory replacement for the LT1, made by Sealed Power. There's your part number there. Hopefully you can see that. H597DCP and then STD for standard. This piston is very similar. The little ring land areas are thicker than the stock one, but from the pin, pin height to the top of the piston there, it is almost identical. I mean, it's very, if anything, this is a hair shorter by a couple thousand. But not much you know same ring pack is used on this piston as your stock which is one of the reasons i was you know wanted to go with this one was because i already had bought the rings and everything thinking we were good so anyway we're gonna stick with this one this one is five grams heavier than the stock piston so i'm going to use it with the factory pin because it's lighter than what came with this shouldn't have a problem there but with the with the factory pin in this piston we're only five grams heavier. Talking with some people, I've been told that it won't really matter. It's not gonna hurt us anything. So now basically what we have to do is we have the, uh, the pin inside the house being frozen currently in the freezer. And we gotta take and heat this end of the rod with the map gas torque. And we basically wanna heat it just enough to where it's got a nice kind of light red color. We're not looking for anything super hot with it. We don't want it to be bright red and all that we don't want to change the properties of the metal we don't want to weaken anything we just want to heat it up enough to expand the hole with the pin being shrunk a little bit and so we can actually put it in and center everything up so that's where we're at i think i have some more video that i took earlier where i actually pressed the piston off of this it's not the best way to do it for sure but if you need to save the piston you definitely probably better off to take it to a machine shop and have them do that part of it for you but that piston was already damaged we weren't looking to save it so that's where we're at with it so we're going to just go ahead and proceed with this procedure now if it gives me too much of a fit i may just go ahead and take it to the machine shop anyway but you know we'll figure that out as we cross that bridge anyway i hope you guys enjoy the video if you do give us a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe so you can follow along with future content and let's roll with this thing i got the piston in today that we ordered from advanced sealed power hyper eutectic replacement for this lt1 i'm gonna go ahead now and i'm gonna press the pin out of the stock rod and get that piston off and i'm gonna take a measurement of that that piston and pin combination against this one and i'm hoping that we're going to be right about the same weight so i'm gonna go ahead and get started with that Got the rod out, no damage there, so that's good. All right, so factory piston pin, 674 grams. Seal power, 684 grams. Let's try it again. 674. to 684. 
We'll swap the pins out, see if one pin is heavier than the other. The factory pin is a hair lighter. That puts it at 679 grams. All right, that's 675 to 679. So we're talking about four grams difference between the two pistons, guys. So, okay, so first thing we need to do is make sure we have our orientation correct for our piston and the rod. So we know, I know that these dots go towards the uh, counterweights. Okay, so since they go towards the counterweights, and this is going to be the number one hole, it will be that way. So that's how our piston and rod will need to go into the engine that way. So I need, I need the front side of the piston to line up with the dots that we have here. Um, the factory, the factory pistons have a little arrow. So the factory pistons have a little arrow on the top side, and um, that indicates the front. On these, it's a dot right there. The factory one, the little arrow, is like a, a letter B and an arrow right down there in the middle. It's kind of hard to see it. Probably wouldn't pick it up well on camera, but as you can see, this piston has a dot for the front. And it also, just in case that wasn't enough, it has you know F for front stamped on it as well. So we will have this sitting in there in that orientation. So we just got to heat the rod, get it going, and uh, like I said, we'll be in, we should be in good shape. So I'm gonna grab the torch and see if we can get it going. Alright guys, so there you have it. We uh, we heated the end of the rod up just like we said we were going to do. Um, hopefully we didn't get too much heat into it. It's a little hot down towards the bottom. I tried to turn the lights off so I could get a better view of how red it was getting. It never really got to a bright red, just a dull glow. And in fact, once we pulled the heat off of it, the glow kind of went away instant. So I think we'll be in good shape. Um, but we just heated it up. That expanded the end of the rod. Then we took and froze the pin so that shrunk that down a little bit. Lined the piston up the direction we need it. Slide it on. And, I mean, we're good to go. So, that's pretty straightforward. Um, if you're at home, um, you know, maybe the machine shop's out a while. You just need to swap a piston or two around. That's, a, you know, that's a good way to get one on for you. So, anyway, i got to let this cool down a little bit. And then uh, we'll go over and we'll check the, rod, the clearance on this rod bearing. This is the last one we got to do. Um, should check out fine that way. And then we'll throw this one in the hole. And we'll have all eight of the rods and pistons installed. And we'll just be on to the rest of the short block. Yeah, so anyway, we're going to get ready to swap this thing. Uh, put this thing over there in the hole in just a minute. All right, guys. So I want to point out one thing when you do this procedure. Um, you only have about a second, maybe second and a half or so to get the pin in the position you want um, on the rod. So in other words, to center the rod inside of the piston and have the pin at an equal distance to each side, you only have about a second and a half to get everything lined up. Um, when you account for the heat that's involved with it also and everything, it makes it kind of a quick process that you really need to have a fixture set up for it. Um, I didn't have it and I came up about a sixteenth of an inch short. It's one of those deals I wasn't too worried about. I was thinking it would be pretty easy to find 
a machine shop locally that would have the fixtures, they could just press it over and move it a little bit. Uh, that turned out to not really be the case. Um, I had to visit with four different machine shops in the area before I finally came across um, Abacus Racing. That was the last stop. And uh, they are a machine shop out of Virginia Beach specializing in performance work. And those guys had a fixture. They threw it in, moved the pin over a sixteenth of an inch, and got me out and back on the way. Quick and painless process. Um, Seem like really nice people, never had a chance to work with them on anything, but I'm thinking that's probably going to change going forward. Um, I got the LS2 block in the corner over there, probably going to end up giving them a shot on that and see what they can do with it for me. So uh, in the future, you probably see some of them on the channel. Uh, for now, though, we got everything like we want it. We're going to go ahead and throw the piston rings up here and get all that situated. Then we'll check the clearance on this last uh, rod journal throw everything back together as long as the clearances look right and then we'll have the complete rotating assembly in. Um, I got to do a little bit of cleanup work on the camshaft and um, then we can install that along with the timer set and throw the oil pump back on it. We'll have a short block. So that's where we're at. Keep going. project we're using the 2M uh, 4626 Hastings rings ended up messing up a couple of the rails so I had to order another set of rings so we got extras in here stack down here at the bottom so looking good there then we're uh, for the for this engine we're using the extra clearance uh, cleavite bearings take the rag and some brake cleaner and wipe them down pretty good Again, these bearings have a top and a bottom, so you just need to make sure you get the right ones in there. Uh, like if you can see it on there, it's marked with, hopefully you can tell it, it's marked with lower on that one, and then this one will be upper. Upper goes in the big end, lower goes in the cap side. Alright, got our dial board, I mean our uh, mic for the journal. Work it down to 45 foot pounds at the, uh, I could do an increment step up to it. So we have the rotating assembly installed in the block. Um, everything is spinning free, no problems there. I think we're good to go. Happy where we're at with it. But on the next video, we'll be back in here buttoning up the short block. Um, I'll do the cam install and the time is set. We'll agree to cam in and probably go ahead and throw the oil pump and the rest of the jazz on there with it. Um, so the short block is almost complete, guys. Got a little bit more work. Probably we'll have it done this evening. Um, like I said, it'll just be for the next video. I got a lot of editing to do to get this one straight as it is. So I appreciate you guys following along with the build. Um, it's been awesome to see, you know, getting some support and everything behind it. So if you haven't already done so, subscribe below. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please give us a like. It helps us out a lot and gets it out to more people. 
and uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one. I appreciate it. Um, I will actually put a link right here. Um, if you guys want to see some more, you can go back and look at some of the other videos. The last one we did was actually um, installing the rest of the pistons and went through a little bit more detail of what I was looking for when checking the clearances and stuff of that nature. So if you want to see that, that's right up here. And uh, anyway, like I said, we'll catch you on the next one, guys. Thanks.